Here's a countdown of 12 films that teach us humans are rather excellent at shooting ourselves in the foot with a smirk on our faces. Watch, enjoy, and perhaps just perhaps take a lesson or two from these celluloid catastrophes. Do you really need another reminder just how spectacularly talented humans are at creating their own messes, though? Dr. Strangelove or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb, 1964. No monsters or freaky weather patterns, just the old-fashioned fear of mutually assured destruction, courtesy of the Cold War, in Stanley Kubrick's iconic satire. When a zealous general goes rogue and orders a nuclear strike against the Soviet Union, it's a mad dash to stop the end of the world. This is irony at its finest. We built the nukes, then had to run around like headless chickens trying to prevent our own obliteration. It's like slamming your own thumb with a hammer, only with more global consequences. Soylent Green, 1973. In the dystopian future that Richard Fleischer paints in Soylent Green, the Earth's become a total hotbox due to our flagrant disregard for the environment, and humanity survives on manufactured food from the Soylent Corporation. What's on the menu, you ask? Spoiler alert, it's people. Soylent Green is people. What better way to prove we're our own worst enemy than by literally feeding on ourselves? They're making our food out of people. Next thing they'll be breeding us like cattle for food. You gotta tell them. You gotta tell them. I promise, Tiger. I promise. I'll tell the exchange. You tell everybody. From human cannibalistic horrors, we shift to an animated feature. Pixar's lovable robot Wally tells a tale of our planet so filled with trash that we've outsourced cleanup to robots while humans live in space essentially becoming boneless blobs glued to screens. Wale is a cute reminder that maybe, just maybe, we should stop ordering one-time use items and start recycling more. After all, who wants to be a blob, right? Mad Max, Fury Road, 2015. George Miller sure knows how to show us a miserable time. In Fury Road, society has collapsed, because of course it has, and the world's a desert wasteland where humanity's last remnants live under the tyranny of Immortan Joe. When your best job prospects involve becoming a war boy, you know things have really hit the fan. We're left to wonder, why can't we all just get along and share resources, instead of turning into mohawked road warriors? The Day After Tomorrow, 2004. Love them or hate them, Roland Emmerich's disaster films are top-tier end-of-the-world entertainment. In The Day After Tomorrow, the enemy is not some extraterrestrial force, but rather our own neglect of Mother Earth. Global warming triggers a new ice age, burying half the northern hemisphere under snow. Sure, it's science stretched thin, but it does get you to think, should I really take my car for that two-block trip to the grocery store? Blade Runner 2049, 2017. Denis Villeneuve's atmospheric sequel to the original Ridley Scott classic further explores the dystopian future where humanity has pretty much run Earth into the ground. To cope, we've created replicants, synthetic humans, to take on the tasks we no longer can. But naturally, we end up at odds with our own creations, proving once again that we're our own worst enemy. The visuals alone scream, this is our future if we don't get it together, people. Children of Men, 2006. Alfonso Cuaron's dystopian thriller is next on our list. Set in a future where humans have become infertile, society teeters on the brink of collapse. It's the ultimate demonstration of humanity's knack for self-sabotage. We literally can't reproduce, and yet we still find time to fight and divide ourselves. If that isn't a duh moment, I don't know what is. Besides, who doesn't love Clive Owen running around trying to save the last pregnant woman on Earth? Snowpiercer, 2013. This high-speed critique of social inequality on a globe-spanning train takes us for a wild ride. 
In an attempt to curb global warming, we accidentally freeze the entire planet. The only survivors live on the Snowpiercer train, where the rich indulge in luxury while the poor are left in squalor. It's a chilling, no pun intended, reminder of how disastrous our class system can be. Sure, we're on a train to disaster, but hey, at least it's not a bus. Melancholia, 2011. Lars von Trier's cosmic drama may have a rogue planet crashing into Earth, but the real disaster? The crippling depression that Kirsten Dunst's character endures, mirroring humanity's often self-imposed mental suffering. Sure, impending doom doesn't help the mood, but the film's exploration of how we can be our own worst enemy psychologically is beautifully poignant. Idiocracy, 2006. Mike Judge's biting satire set 500 years in the future presents a world where humanity has dumbed down to an astonishing degree due to, well, you guessed it, our own actions. The smart folks aren't having kids, and the not-so-smart ones are multiplying like rabbits. It's a hilarious yet terrifying look at where our society could be heading if we prioritize reality TV and fast food over education and critical thinking. And mankind became stupider at a frightening rate. Some had high hopes that genetic engineering would correct this trend in evolution. But sadly, the greatest minds and resources were focused on conquering hair loss and prolonging erections. The Road, 2009. John Hillcoat's adaptation of Cormac McCarthy's novel doesn't tell us exactly what caused the world to go to hell, but it's safe to bet it's our fault. The post-apocalyptic landscape is grim and unforgiving, filled with cannibals and desperate survivors. The film is a bleak reminder that, given the worst circumstances, humans can become, well, less than humane. AI Artificial Intelligence 2001 in a future drowned by melted polar ice caps, ringing any bells, we've created humanoid robots to cope. The catch? They can feel love, particularly our young protagonist, David. Humanity's capacity for creating sentient beings, only to abandon and mistreat them, is a testament to our own self-destructive tendencies. It's a tearjerker, yes, but not because we might all drown, but because we might just forget what it means to be human.